In this clip, I will look at properties of rational functions. So what was a rational function? A rational function is just the quotient of two polynomials. Yeah. So I divide a polynomial p of x by a polynomial q of x. So this one is rational, and suppose that the degree of p is larger than the degree of the polynomial q. So in this case the degree of the numerator equals n is larger than m the degree of the denominator. Then we may reduce this rational function, we may write it as a rational function or, uh, that has a rational function hx divided by qx, so we have the same denominator, but h is now a polynomial of lower degree than q, and the remainder term, and the remainder term is written r of x, which is a polynomial. For example, take the rational function f of x, equals x squared plus 1 divided by x plus 1. So in this case we have uh, two polynomials. One is given by p of x equals x squared plus 1, which has degree 2, and q of x, which is just a simple linear function, and its degree equals 1. Yeah. So, we may reduce fx according to the property. We may write fx as a zero degree polynomial divided by a one first degree polynomial plus some other polynomial. Well, in this case, the polynomial h is given by 2. You can write fx as 2 divided by x plus 1 plus x minus 1. So, r is the linear function x minus 1. So I'll just check that this is valid, what is stated here. 2 divided by x plus 1 plus x minus 1 equals 2 divided by x plus 1. We choose to have the same denominators. So x minus 1 times x plus 1 divided by the same denominator x plus 1, which gives a reason for us to add up the numerators. 2 plus x squared minus 1 divided by x plus 1. 2 minus 1 equals 1, so this equals x squared plus 1 divided by x plus 1, which equals fx. So this seems to be correct. So now let's have a look how long division can contribute to factorizing fx like the way we did before, reducing the uh, denumerator and calculating the remainder term like so. 2 divided by x plus 1 plus x minus 1. We use the technique of long division like we did before by factorizing a polynomial for a given root. Now we put x squared plus 1 and we look at this term x squared plus 1 divided by x plus 1. So we see that x plus 1 fits x times in x squared. Now we get a remainder term x times x plus 1 equals x squared plus x. And we take a difference. So now we get 1 minus x as the remainder term. And let's see how often x plus 1 fits in there. And this is just at minus 1. So we get minus x minus 1 since minus 1 times x plus 1 equals minus x minus 1. If we take a difference, then we end up with a 2. Well, this gives us a reason to believe that we don't end up with a 0, like we did with factorizing over zeros in a function. So this is a remainder term unequal to 0. And this one is, has a lower degree than this one, so this one cannot fit uh, anymore inside this 2. So now we write x squared plus 1 divided by x plus 1. This equals x minus 1. 
plus the remainder term. Well, the remainder term, we still have to divide it by x plus 1. So we get x minus 1 plus 2 divided by x plus 1. Now we discuss a more extensive, a, more, a, hard, a little bit harder problem. So we have as a numerator now a polynomial of degree 5, and we divide it by a polynomial of degree 3. And we'll show that actually we may find a polynomial of a polynomial h and uh, divide it by this polynomial of degree 3. So polynomial h of a degree lower than 3 and write fx as h divided by q plus a remainder term r. We use a technique of long division. So first we put down we write down the numerator, this polynomial of degree 5 in the middle, and on the left hand side we choose the function q, so, or x to the power 3 minus 2x. Now, well, let's see how often this fits in this term in the middle. Well, we start off with x to the power 5, so 3x to the power 5, so it fits 3x squared times x to the power 3 times. So if we multiply 3x squared by the left-hand term, then we get 3x to the power 5 minus 6x to the power 3. Now we take a difference. Well, the remainder has lower degree, since we cancel out the x to the power 5, and we get a, a polynomial of degree 4. Well, here we have a polynomial of degree 3, so this fits x times inside of this inside this expression so we get x to the power 4 minus 2x squared since this is x times this one again we take a difference and we obtain 7x to the power 3 plus 2 times x squared which equals minus minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 10 now, how often does x to the power 3 fit in 7x to the power 3? Well, indeed, 7 times. So we now subtract 7 times x to the power 3 minus 14x, which equals 7 times this expression. Taking differences, we end up with a quadratic function, or a polynomial of degree 2, 2x to the power 2 plus 9x plus 10. And since this has lower degree than 3, this will be the remainder term. So now we may write fx as this polynomial we found here, quadratic term, 3x to the power 2 plus x plus 7, plus the remainder term still being divided by x to the power 3 minus 2x. So 2x squared plus 9x plus 10, the remainder divided by x to the power 3 minus 2x.